Welcome to the basics of managing personnel records. What follows is our essential guidance, the core of every records management training we offer, with the addition of records management considerations unique to personnel records. This training is for government agency employees who create or receive records relating to personnel services. We can't address every records management question or challenge in the next 40 or so minutes, but we will offer the foundational knowledge to get you started, and we'll point you towards the resources that will move you forward. First, we'll define and outline the basics of records management. Then, we'll introduce you to our records retention schedules and show you how to use them and we'll end the presentation by addressing specific personnel records. Records management is all about control. It allows you and I to be compliant, efficient, and transparent at every stage of a record's life cycle. The life cycle of a record begins when it is created or received. This is the perfect time to make sure everyone understands the records management responsibilities, that there are documented policies and procedures in place to guide the active management of those records, and that all agency staff is trained to use those resources to manage their records. Getting ahead in the first step of a records life cycle guarantees straightforward retrieval, disclosure, and disposition down the line. A record is active when it's supporting your current work in the use stage. You might share active records over email or edit them as a team in a shared folder. For those records to be useful to your agency, they need to be organized for accessibility. A records inventory is an excellent tool to identify what already exists, where it's stored, and how long it needs to be kept. While in the use stage, you'll want to explore adopting tools to simplify the organization of and access to your records. After you are done using a record, it moves into storage. This may be the stage at which records are the most inactive, but that isn't an excuse to sleep on a records management. This is the core of our work because this is where retention comes in. Understanding retention requirements retaining records in the appropriate format for the approved amount of time, and protecting essential records are all necessary to fulfill your obligations to your agency and the public. The last stage in a record's life cycle is destruction or preservation. The best part of destroying non-archival records and transferring archival records is that you and your agency are no longer responsible for that material. At that point, you can point them to the DAN that gives you the authority to destroy or transfer those records. The measurable decrease in records volume will increase your job satisfaction. When you can find what you want, when you need it, you can focus on the parts of your job that bring you joy and keep you curious. Records management is an essential function of any government agency and will make your work and your life easier. First, it enables your agency to fulfill its mission. Information is one of your agency's most valuable assets, and managing your records helps you to find the records that you need when you need them. When your agency has access to the right information, it can make the best possible decisions. Second, it's a lot more cost effective. If an agency is keeping only what it needs to keep and only for the necessary amount of time, there's less to hold on to, there's less material to wade through to find what you need, and there will be fewer records to keep track of. You'll save on storage costs and staff time, leaving more time and space for you to focus on yourself and the service you provide to your community. Managing records promotes open and accountable government by documenting your public service. When your agency can respond to records requests quickly and completely, they are demonstrating their compliance with state and federal law. Ultimately, records management protects you and your agency from unnecessary risk. Public records are valuable informational assets that need your care and consideration. Records management offers the framework to provide that care, and the Washington State Archives is here to help.
The Revised Code of Washington, or RCW, is the legal framework that governs the work we do as employees of state and local government agencies. Chapter 4014 of the RCW tells you how to manage, destroy, or transfer public records. It also provides a straightforward definition of a public record. According to the RCW, public records are anything made or received in the transaction of public business. Remember that public records aren't just text documents. They can be audio recordings, social media posts, PowerPoint slide decks, emails, and even chat logs. Anything that you create or share in the course of your job is a public record regardless of format. For instance, as a consultant, I provide advice over email. Every day I work to file and organize those emails for retention. If you're an administrator in a police department, you could be working with case files in a database. If you are a social media coordinator, your records could take the form of tweets, status updates, or Instagram posts. All this content, regardless of format, needs to be managed. Please note, the definition I've offered for a public record is for retention and destruction purposes, which is what the Washington State Archives is here to help you with. Public records are also defined under the scope of public disclosure, under Chapter 4256 of the RCW. The State Attorney General's Office can help you with disclosure and the Public Records Act. I'll need to invoke the Revised Code of Washington again, and this time to make the point that public records are public property. Public records belong to the general public, not to the individual office holders, employees, or volunteers that create and receive them. If anything, this fact adds to the gravity of our work. Records you create at work in greater service to the public cannot go home with you or be given away. They are protected by laws in the RCW and guidance from the State and Local Records Committee. When you take care of your records, you are taking care of public assets. So far, I've addressed the legal definition of a public record for retention and destruction purposes. But the RCW also outlines the consequences of the mismanagement of public records. Let me emphasize that it's purposeful or deliberate misconduct that this penal provision addresses. For example, in 2012, there was an investigation into controversial business practices in Skamania County. The county auditor had ordered staff to destroy records without applying retention. That former Skamania County auditor pled guilty to attempted injury to public record. They ended up performing 168 hours of community service and paid $62,000 in restitution. This doesn't mean that the police are going to come knocking on your door if you accidentally delete an email. And you don't have to hold on to everything either. But the serious consequences of deliberate records mismanagement are worth being mindful of. Aside from records, public records being public property, it's important to note that public records aren't specific to any one format or device. It doesn't matter if you're using an agency account or device or a personal account or device. It's the information and evidence of your work that matters. If a record you create or receive in any format or on any device relates to public business, then it's a public record. With so many ways to communicate, it's important to develop policies and procedures that address the capture, access, retrieval, and retention requirements for records generated or received on platforms like Zoom, Facebook, or Teams chat. And if you don't want to be responsible for managing public records on your personal accounts or devices, don't use them for work. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, a record's digital or physical format is not going to determine whether it's a public record, but it can determine how to retain the records. The Washington Administrative Code, or WAC, establishes that electronic records must be retained in electronic format. What this means is that printing and retaining a copy of a born digital record will not be an acceptable substitute. 
If you have a website or email record, you can't print out a copy for retention purposes. There is important metadata associated with electronic records that verify the record's authenticity. Print an electronic record and you lose that metadata. Keep that in mind when it comes to emails, tweets, or text messages. You need to keep electronic records in their electronic format. So how do you know what you need to keep and how long you need to keep it? The answer to that question lies in the records retention schedules. They specify how long to keep specific types of records. They also give agencies the authority to destroy or transfer records that have met retention. Records retention schedules are legal documents created and approved for your use by the state or local records committees. The committee members apply their expertise to address legal, historical, financial, and audit requirements. To determine retention lengths, we examine the agency's business needs, laws and professional standards, statutes of limitation or the amount of time legal action can be taken after an event has occurred, for example, you have three years to report and litigate a personal injury, so records documenting that injury are retained for at least three years. You have six years to report and litigate a breach of contract, so records documenting that contract are retained for at least six years. And you have 10 years to recover real property, so records documenting ownership of that property are retained for at least 10 years. We also consider historical significance or compliance value. And finally, we look at audit examination periods when considering retention lengths. If you work for a state agency, you'll use the state retention schedules. And if you work for a local agency, you'll use the local retention schedules. I'm going to take a break from the presentation here and walk you through our website. I want to give you a sense of where you'll find both the state and local records retention schedules. But let's start with local. The first thing we'll want to do is navigate to our main page, sos.wa.gov archives. The easiest way to access the retention schedules is via the top navigation bar. If you're with a local government agency, you will select the Local Governments link. From here, you'll want to select your type of agency. Once you've selected your type of agency, and for this, we'll go ahead and select Port Districts as an example, you'll be directed to your local agency landing page. Bookmark this page. It's going to be your number one retention and records management resource. The retention schedules your agency can use are bolded at the top left of your landing page. The first schedule you should see, and this goes for all local government agencies, is the Local Government Common Records Retention Schedule, also known as CORE. CORE outlines the retention of records that are common to all local agencies. This includes meetings of your government bodies, contracts and agreements, facilities management, human resources, and others. Below CORE, you'll find your local government sector schedules used for the unique records your agency generates and receives. Let's go back to our main page here. If you're with a state agency, you're going to want to select the state agencies link. Right off the bat, you'll be directed to the state agency landing page. Bookmark this page if you're a state agency. It's going to be your number one retention and records management resource. You'll find the state records retention schedules linked at the top left of the state agency landing page. Right at the top, you'll find the state government general records retention schedule, also known as the state general schedule. Like CORE, the State General Schedule covers records that are common to all state government agencies. The State General Schedule is used in conjunction with the approved schedules of your specific state agency. So if you're with the Secretary of State's office, like myself, you'll use the State General Schedule as well as the Secretary of State Schedule, which you scroll down, you'll find right here. 
A good rule of thumb. Your agency is approved to use the core or state general schedule along with your agency's specific or sector schedules. This gives you several different places to look to find the right retention. It's important to understand the differences between the two general schedules and your agency unique schedules. The core or state general schedule covers the administrative functions all agencies perform. This includes financial management, human resources, asset management, policy creation, and more. These schedules are most commonly about the agency operating on behalf of itself. Your sector or unique schedules covers functions and requirements specific to your particular agency. You'll want to make sure you consider your sector or unique schedules to make sure you don't miss any special requirements. These schedules are most commonly about the agency operating and service to others. As an example, if your agency needs to get a construction permit to build an agency-owned asset, those records fall under the general schedules. If your agency approves or issues construction permits to external agencies, those records fall under an agency unique schedule. Aside from retention schedules, you can access resources and guidance specific to your agency from your state or local landing page. We offer countless advice sheets and guidance that can help any agency representative manage their records. This is a screenshot of one record series, meetings, staff, and internal committees that you'll find in CORE and the State General Schedule. Retention schedules are lists of record types and agency manages, much like any list you create or use in your work. Each type of record has a Disposition Authority Number, or DAN. DANs are unique identifiers that authorize the retention and disposition of a record. Like most unique alphanumeric identifiers, DANs don't make much sense on their own, but in the context of an entire schedule, they distinguish one series from another. DANs are important to include in inventories, box content lists, or disposition logs. The description of records field is where you can expect to spend most of your time. It describes the business function and type of record that falls under that DAN. It includes descriptions and examples of records included and excluded in that business process. This can seem confusing at first, but knowing what types of records are included as well as excluded will help you identify the correct series. Keep in mind, your record may still fall under that DAN if it matches the description, but isn't specifically identified in the included list. This happens a lot because different agencies call the same document or file by a different name. Thankfully, record series are functional and not subject or department dependent, so they include as many applicable records as possible. This record series covers records about the agency operating on behalf of itself, placing it in the realm of core and the state general schedule. The retention and disposition action tells you how long to retain a record, when that countdown starts, and what you do with the record once it has met retention. In this example, you have two countdown triggers, end of calendar year and until no longer needed for agency business. As soon as both is satisfied, the record is retained for two years before being destroyed. The designation field can go in one of several ways, starting with archival or non-archival. Archival records have long-term public research value and should be transferred to the Washington State Archives for appraisal or permanent retention. Non-archival records don't carry the same weight and can be destroyed as soon as they have met retention. Another designation category is essential or non-essential. Essential records need to be protected and or backed up to resume business under emergency conditions. Non-essential records do not need the same care or consideration. The final designation, which is either OPR or OFM, has no bearing on your work, so you won't need to consider this holdover for, for some dated legislation. 
Many of our state and local government agencies are caught in between paper and digital processes. As your office goes digital, it's important to consider how you'll manage the paper backlog. If the records are designated archival, you have several options, and each of them relieves you of your legal responsibility to care for those records. You can transfer archival paper or digital records to the Washington State Archives at the end of their retention period. Have archival paper originals and digital scans of that same material? Offer it all up to the archives. You should hold on to the scans until they've met retention, but we can take the paper originals early. Please note, you will be responsible for responding to public records requests for any archival records you hold on to. Make your life easier by making your archival records our responsibility. If the records are designated non-archival, you'll have to think about what should be retained and or digitized and what can be defensively destroyed. Consider scanning non-archival records with extensive retention requirements to save space and increase access. Organize and store physical non-archival records with retention requirements shorter than six years. Non-archival records that are frequently accessed are good candidates for scanning, especially if they are a challenge to access in paper form. Please note, be selective about the records you digitize. Going digital does make access easier, but it can also turn a paper problem into an electronic one. Organization and planning are key no matter what format you choose to retain your records in. This is the main thing we want you to understand about retention. Your responsibility is to keep your agency's records for the minimum amount of time listed in the retention schedule and then either destroy them or transfer them to the state archives for preservation or appraisal. Please keep in mind that there are only two agencies authorized to be legal custodians of your records. That's your agency or the Washington State Archives. You can't transfer records to an individual, a library, a historical society, or anything like that. And you can't allow staff to keep records as personal possessions. Agencies can choose to hold on to records past retention for a variety of different reasons, but there are a couple of situations where you would absolutely need to hang on to your records past their minimum retention. One is in the case of a litigation hold. If there's a lawsuit pending or ongoing, and you have records that are responsive to that litigation, you would need to keep those records until the litigation has been resolved or the hold is lifted. The second situation is if there's a public records request. Let's say you've got records that are 20 years past their retention. You've already identified them as non-archival and you plan to destroy the records next Monday. If a public records request comes in this afternoon for those records slated for destruction, you'll still need to provide them to fulfill the public records request because they are still in your possession. Once the request is fulfilled, you can resume with destruction or transfer as planned. So what can you destroy now? Transitory records have temporary informational value and should be deleted or recycled as soon as possible. You'll find a whole section of record series at the end of both the core and state general schedule that will help you connect your transitory records to the appropriate DANs for disposal. Thankfully, a significant percentage of the public records we create and receive are transitory. Your best defense against transitory records is to dispose of these records as soon as you've identified the DAN that gives you the legal authority to do so. By getting rid of what you can, when you can, you'll make records management so much easier on yourself. For as many times as you create and receive a record, you are going to face a retention decision. Some of those decisions are easy, such as identifying and destroying a transitory record. But many of these retention decisions will take some time and careful consideration. Only regular and consistent experience with your approved retention schedules is going to make it easier. 
This is going to be a challenge at first, like any new process you take on. It's important to understand that while you have hundreds of retention series options, the specific nature of your work will narrow down those options to something closer to a dozen. The first thing you want to do when faced with any retention determination is to ask some questions. De determining whether um, the record is unique to your agency will guide you to your general or agency-specific schedule. Understanding how a record is processed and who is involved will reinforce which schedule to use and land you in the correct functional category. Understanding the context of a record is going to reinforce that functional category. And knowing what the record is about will help you narrow in on the appropriate record series. Once you've addressed these foundational questions, visit your approved retention schedules on our website. Using the three main navigation techniques, find the record series that works best for the record at hand. If you still aren't clear on the appropriate retention series, reach out to the records management team at the Washington State Archives. We are here to help. The general schedule contains big bucket record series that cover most of the records you'd find in a personnel file or folder. This includes employment applications, resumes, appointment letters, results of background checks, eligibility certification for position, notices of personnel action or change in employment status, commendations, awards, and notices of disciplinary action. These series have a minimum retention of six years after date of separation from agency. For CORE, that series is employee work history. And for the state general schedule, it'll be personnel employment history files. Certain records in these series may need to be retained longer for retirement benefit verification. We'll talk about this a little later on in the webinar. Every agency generates and receives personnel records. Personnel records also function in a variety of different ways. For each function of a personnel record, there is a different reason for, for why the records were created or received. This context influences the retention period. Retirement verification records, for instance, have much longer retention than staff development records. Training records crop up across state and local government agencies. But agencies can also have their own unique training needs, which will be outlined in the human resource section of agency unique schedules. Looking at the table of contents, you'll find training and human resource management sections that should cover all of your bases. Control F the appropriate schedule and run a search on the keyword training. With that same keyword in mind, browse the subject index at the back of the relevant schedule. For training records, it's important to home in on who is providing training to whom. And if you get stuck, you can always reach out. We'd be happy to help. The core and state general schedule cover most misconduct records. The investigative outcome of any misconduct in these schedules will determine the retention. Exceptions to this exist in the law enforcement and school schedules. These agencies serve specific populations, so their misconduct records are retained separately in their agency unique schedules. These exceptions have retention value that is not based on any investigative outcome. When you have schedules with overlapping functions, you want to make sure and differentiate where you can. Use the table of contents to locate the human resource management section in the core state general or agency unique schedule. Control F the appropriate schedule to run a keyword search on misconduct or complaint. Browse the subject index at the back of the relevant schedule with those same keywords in mind. Juggling the personnel misconduct records for agency takes some extra consideration. If you're lost, feel free to reach out with any questions or concerns. Employee health records relate to illness or injury acquired outside of work. 
employee medical and exposure records relate to illness or injury acquired during work. For instance, if you're exposed to chemicals on your vacation and get a note from your doctor, that note falls under employee health. If you are exposed to chemicals at work, those records fall under employee medical and exposure. Routine health records have a much shorter retention than medical and exposure records. Looking at the table of contents, you'll find sections that cover employee history and employee health and safety. Control, control F the appropriate schedule and search health or safety. With those same keywords in mind, browse the subject index at the back of the schedule. Health and safety are terms that crop up a lot in the general schedules, so ask questions to narrow the results. Go with the record series that makes the most sense for you and your agency, and reach out if something has you confused. Retirement verification records retention requirements are not one size fits all. We've consulted with the Department of Retirement Systems on this information, but make sure you verify with your agency's retirement authority. You need to retain personnel records that include an employee's name, date of birth, social security number, service dates, break in service dates, including type of leave, the hours worked, compensation, rate of pay, and eligibility determination. Retirement verification records are retained under CORE and the State General Schedule. Both schedules require a lengthy retention period of at least 60 years. With extensive retention requirements like this, it's important to consider how your personnel files are kept. If they are paper, how are you protecting them and making them accessible for 60 or more years? If the records are digital, are you prepared to convert those files to a new format or migra migrate those files to a new storage location if necessary? How can you limit the number of records you need to hold on to so you can take better care of what's left? A lot can happen in 60 years, and retirement benefits are important to everyone. So be careful and considerate in planning for the retention of retirement verification and other long-term records. Here are some ideas for managing the retention of records you'll be tempted to store together under an employee's name. These records will have varying retention lengths, but they'll only to apply to one person. Also, remember to pay attention to the cutoff and not just the retention length. Within an individual's personnel file, create subfolders that organize the files by three general categories, such as health and safety, employee work history, and employee pay. Organize the files by three retention categories, short term for records retained under six years, medium term for records retained at least six years, and long term for records retained for 30 or more years. We rely on you to help us identify what record series to highlight and whether the language in those series becomes dated or obsolete. We do everything we can to stay on top of retention series updates, but we're juggling the retention schedules for all state and local government agencies. We need your help. You are our subject matter experts, and retention schedules are living documents that are regularly revisited and revised. If you don't find what you're looking for on our website, or you're not even sure what you should be looking for, we're here to provide advice and consultation by phone or email. It's the best part of our jobs to connect with all of the diverse state and local government agency representatives, so don't be shy with your questions or concerns. All our services are free, and there is no record too small or project too big to reach out and ask for help. It's what we're here for. Thank you for your time.